Thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to discuss vector 2. Uh, this is a proportional division of a line. We are told that uh, given that vector OA equals to 3i 2j minus 4k and vector OB equals to 4i plus 5j minus 2k and a point P divides line AB externally in the ratio 3 is to 2 Determine the magnitude of OP to two decimal places. Remember to subscribe to this channel and to also share the link with friends. Let me first of all sketch the positions of these two, the positions of the three points here in the vectors. So we're going to have, assuming the origin is here, assuming this is the origin, O. So we are having a, a such that this is vector OA, then point B such that this is vector OB from origin. Then now we are told along line AB now there is a point which divides. So the point is P. Now P divides externally. That is why it is not in between A and B. Therefore there is also a vector OP which gets introduced there. So in this now, we are told uh, we are given the position vectors of A and B, but that of P is not known. But this can be determined anyway. Uh, remember, the ratios can first of all be placed. P is dividing AB in the ratio 3 is to 2, and this is happening externally. So it means from A to where P is, we have three units. Then, because it is externally now, we get back two units. That is what it means by three is to two externally. Three, let me, let me use the space even up here. So three is to two with the word externally would mean the same as three is to negative two. So this, this statement, the ratio 3 is to 2 externally, or externally in the ratio 3 is to 2, would mean the same as 3 is to negative 2. So simply 3 is to negative 2 means 3 is to 2 externally. So it means if it's dividing A, B, and the point is P, from A to P, we have 3 units, then we get back to where B is by covering two more units. So this means from A to P we have three units, then back two units. That means if the units were three and we are getting back for two units, it means there are two units here and there remains only one. There remains only one proportion. So these are a total of three proportions and we get back two proportions. That means one proportion remains here. In simpler terms now, we can say the point B divides AP in the ratio 1 is to 2, but now internally, internally in this case. So now we can give the position vectors. Uh, for A, it's 3, 2, negative 4, for B, it's 4, 5, negative 2. And for P, which is unknown, we can let it be X, Y, and Z. So those are the position vectors. Now, it's good we apply what we call the ratio theorem. Uh, briefly, just to mention how the ratio theorem works. Assuming all the vectors are unknown and that the ratio here is M and the ratio here is N, I can write the general formulae for the ratio theorem such that when we take the ratio M out of the total proportions now, M plus N, then we multiply by, because we have picked ratio M, we multiply with the opposite vector, that is P, we should get... Okay, and we add 
ratio n out of all the proportions m plus n. Now we have picked n, so we take the opposite vector, and that is a. We are supposed to get the position of b. That is the general statement of the ratio theorem. So that said, it means we can apply it by picking one out of the total proportions, which are three. But now we multiply a third because we've picked one with the vector here. This is x, y, z. When we add, this is going to be 2 out of 3 times the opposite vector here. That is a 3, 2, negative 4. This is going to be vector b which is 4, 5, negative 2. So now we can solve this now. This is what we are supposed to solve. And upon solving it, we will get the position of P and eventually the magnitude. So now we can say a third X plus two thirds by three, we get two equals to four. So we can get X by saying uh, when two comes to this side, it becomes four minus two. Therefore, a third X equals to two. And if a third X equals to two, to get the value of X, we can multiply by three both sides and this will be six. The next is when we take a third y plus when we take two thirds times two this becomes four out of three equals to five so for us to get the value of y it means we will have to take let me use my calculator now five minus four out of three then now we multiply by 3 to remain with y. And this becomes exactly 11. Then finally, we are supposed to take a third y, a third z, sorry. A third z plus, this is 2 thirds by negative 4. And it becomes negative 8 over 3 equals to negative 2. So with this, we can get the value of z. When I get to my calculator now, I love to take 2. Then I add 8 out of 3. Then now I can multiply by 3 through to remain with z. And z becomes 14. With this, we can say now uh, the position vector of p. That is a vector OP, similar terms, now will be equal to 6i plus 11j plus 14k. So this is the position vector of P. That means now vector OP, we can obtain its magnitude. For us to get magnitude, remember mathematically, the magnitude is expressed this way. It can also be called the modulus or the length of vector OP. It's going to be when we take x squared plus y squared plus z squared, then we obtain the square root. So we pick the units here. We ignore the unit vector. So we will take 6 squared plus 11 squared plus 14 squared then now we obtain the square root 6 squared plus 11 squared plus 14 squared then we obtain square root and remember it's supposed to be in two decimal places so it becomes 18.79 units to two dismal places.